Hello, this is Jeff Swenson speaking to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome to Safe Ultrasound and our discussion on why modify the adductor canal block. Investigators at the University of Utah Orthopedic Center first reported the use of the adductor canal block as a motor sparing alternative to femoral nerve block in 2009. Prior to 2009, the adductor canal block had been described as a way to block the saphenous nerve. However, before this report in regional anesthesia, the extensive sensory loss and motor sparing qualities were not appreciated. Our original report describes injection at the distal third of the femur. However, almost immediately we saw two potential challenges with the original technique. First, the need for injection in close proximity to the superficial femoral artery and femoral vein presented a risk for vascular injury as well as for intravascular injection. Second, the increased depth of the superficial femoral artery at the distal femur would understandably lead anesthesiologists to move the transducer proximally on the thigh to achieve a better image. This more proximal injection could increase the risk of quadriceps weakness. This panel illustrates the depth of the SFA at the level of the distal third of the femur on the left compared with its depth at the middle third of the femur on the right. At the distal third of the adductor canal, the artery is passing deep through the adductor hiatus where it becomes the popliteal artery. Thus, paradoxically, the SFA is easier to image at the mid or proximal thigh than it is at the distal third of the femur. Two points are well illustrated by these ultrasound images. First, perivascular injection can be challenging when the artery is deep and poorly visualized. Thus, deep, poorly visualized arteries present a risk with respect to vessel injury and intravascular injection. Second, the image depth for the SFA is markedly improved by moving the transducer proximally to the mid femur. But how does this change the risk of quad weakness after injection? In fact, both of our original concerns regarding the adductor canal block, namely vascular injury and quadriceps weakness, have now been reported in the literature. Perivascular injection has been associated with femoral artery dissection, pseudoaneurysm formation, intravascular injection with systemic local anesthetic toxicity, and massive hematoma formation in the thigh. As seen in this 2021 article from the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, quadriceps weakness is a real concern after orthopedic surgery, both in terms of the ability to participate in rehabilitation, as well as a risk for injury and fall. From a safety perspective, unanticipated quad weakness may be even more dangerous than expected quad weakness associated with femoral nerve block. Surgeons are very concerned about unanticipated quad weakness as indicated by this publication showing quad weakness in nearly 9% of patients having a ductor canal block after total knee arthroplasty. Unfortunately, some publications in the anesthesia literature may incorrectly suggest that mid-thigh or more proximal injection is not associated with quad weakness. For example, the conclusion in this article states that there were no statistically significant differences in quad strength after mid-thigh injection. However, this conclusion does not reflect individual data showing roughly the same percentage of quad weakness as reported in the orthopedic literature. In this graphic showing quad strength after mid-thigh adductor canal block compared to femoral nerve block, the femoral nerve block patients are represented by blue triangles with clearly impaired quad function. Note that some individuals 
who received mid-thigh adductor canal block show quad impairment similar to that in patients receiving femoral nerve block. The incidence of quadricep weakness after mid-thigh injection adductor canal block in this study is similar to that reported in the orthopedic literature and represents an increased risk of injury for the small but consistent number of patients having anticipated quad weak, unanticipated quad weakness. This is a very good example of how unexpected weakness may be even more dangerous than expected weakness. Study methods must also be very carefully vetted before assuming more proximal injection does not cause motor weakness. For example, investigators in this recent trial state that proximal weakness will not occur after more uh, weakness will not occur after more proximal in injection. However, examination of their methods shows that the most important metric, namely motor effect, was tested only every five minutes for 30 minutes or until surgery commenced. These methods are very concerning since 30 minutes is a very brief interval to assess full motor effect. Even worse, many of these patients may have only been assessed once or twice, in other words, for five to 10 minutes before surgery commenced. We are not provided any interval data for which patients went a full 30 minutes of evaluation and which patients may have been only tested once or twice, in other words, for only 10 minutes. These publications represent a sample of what motivated the search for two important improvements in the adductor canal block. Namely, is there a way to avoid perivascular injection and is there a way to avoid the need for proximal injection site? This search led back to the anatomy lab and the library. Here we use an MRI of the thigh to demonstrate the findings of an extensive description of the innervation of the knee published, published in 1994 by Horner and Delon. In this image we focus on three main nerves of the adductor canal and their pathways to the knee joint. Note that the nerve to the vastus medialis leaves the adductor canal and passes to the deep surface of the vastus medialis on its way to the knee. Likewise, the saphenous as well as the medial femoral cutaneous nerve leave the adductor canal and pass to the deep surface of the sartorius muscle. This fresh cadaver dissection shows the vastus medialis reflected away from the lateral border of the adductor canal. The SFA is illustrated by white arrows. Note that the nerve to the vastus medialis has passed out of the adductor canal and onto the deep surface of the vastus medialis. This dissection shows the intact border on the medial side of the adductor canal. Thus, the superficial femoral artery is not visible because the adductor canal has not been opened. The sartorius has been reflected medially to show the medial femoral cutaneous nerve and the saphenous nerve on the deep surface of the sartorius muscle. As we return to this image of the distal thigh, we can see that even though the superficial femoral artery and femoral vein may be difficult to visualize, the tissue plane between the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles is very easy to identify. To review the traditional adductor canal block requires a perivascular injection 
where the superficial femoral artery may be deep and challenging to visualize. By contrast, the simplified adductor canal block is performed by passing a fenestrated needle across the tissue plane separating the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles in the distal third of the thigh. The fenestrated needle used to perform the block has a pencil point design to assure equal outflow during injection from all eight side ports extending two centimeters from the tip of the needle. The simplified adductor canal block can be performed using a three-step approach to identify ultrasound landmarks. First, position the transducer over the vastus medialis at the superior pole of the patella. Move the transducer posteriorly until the tissue plane between the vastus medialis and sartorius is visible. While keeping this tissue plane in view, move the transducer superiorly until the SFA is visible in the far field of the image. The fenestrated needle is then advanced across the tissue plane between the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles. Ideally, the needle is positioned so that one centimeter of the fenestrated segment is on each side of the plane separating the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles. To summarize, unlike the traditional adductor canal block, the simplified adductor canal block can be performed using an easily recognized landmark that is away from major blood vessels. This is accomplished by positioning the needle with approximately one centimeter of the fenestrated tip on either side of the tissue plane separating the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles. The simplified adductor canal block has been compared to traditional adductor canal block in prospective randomized clinical trials for patients having total knee arthroplasty. Compared to traditional adductor canal block, blocks performed using the simplified technique have fewer vessel passes, shorter procedure times, fewer block failures, and fewer vessel punctures. This slide shows the non-inferiority plots for rest pain, pain with ambulation, and oxycodone use at 12 and 24 hours after surgery. These show non-inferiority for pain control and opioid requirement in patients receiving the simplified adductor canal block compared with traditional adductor canal block. These side-by-side -side videos show the transducer position and corresponding ultrasound view used to perform the simplified adductor canal block. We begin by positioning the transducer over the vastus medialis muscle at the level of the superior pole of the patella. The transducer is then moved medially until the tissue plane between the vastus medialis and sartorius muscle is seen. This will always be the first plane visible as the transducer is moved medially. The transducer is then moved superiorly until the SFA is visible in the far field of the image. This confirms the correct tissue plane. While maintaining this plane in view, the transducer can be moved back to the distal third of the femur to perform the block.
This image shows the ultrasound view with simultaneous needle and transducer positions during an in-plane approach to the simplified adductor canal block. The landmark used to perform this block is the fascial plane between the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles illustrated by yellow arrows. Note the SFA is not visible in the image. The fenestrated needle has been advanced one centimeter across the fascial plane between the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles. Injection produces spread of local anesthetic on the deep surfaces of both the vastus medialis and sartorius muscles. Thank you for joining us at Safe Ultrasound and be sure to see the specific tutorial on how to perform the simplified adductor canal block.